today, House Republicans agreed to continue their ban on earmarks in the upcoming session of Congress. And earlier this week, Senate Republicans did the same thing. So you might be thinking, they're on to something here. This will make a difference. Now, keeping them honest, for all the talk of taking a stand against earmarks, nearly $16 billion in the 2010 budget is related to earmarks. That is less than 1%, 1% of the total budget. In the big scheme of things, eliminating earmarks will barely make a dent. And for all the talk about savings, that money doesn't actually get cut out of the budget if the earmarks go away. You see, getting rid of the earmarks changes how the money gets spent. But without more action from Congress, it won't really change how much gets spent. Well, some members do concede that, but they also note that it's a powerful symbol of what some lawmakers call wasteful spending. Well, fair enough, but there's something else. The ban. And ban's a strong word, isn't it? The ban is non-binding for now, at least until the GOP makes it part of the House rules. Anyways, if it's just a tiny fraction of the overall budget, why do it at all? Why? Because it looks good. Remember when I mentioned political stunts at the top of the show? This is where the stunt part comes in. You see, by taking a stand against earmarks, you don't actually have to stand against any one type of spending, any one program, any one constituency. Like if you say you're for cutting Social Security, seniors might not be too inclined to vote for you next time around. It's easy to stand against earmarks that are just a tiny fraction of the budget. It's a lot harder for Republicans to name any big ticket items that might need to be cut to really shrink the budget. Watch this. Your first priority, Congresswoman, is going to be, uh, you, you've said, is going to be uh, deficit reduction, trying to keep the debt under control. What's the first thing that you would cut? Well, I think what we need to do is put everything on the table and have discussions about it. I understand that, that you need to look at everything, but is there one particular thing that drives you crazy that you think that if you had the opportunity, you'd cut it tomorrow? Well, I think that we've got a lot of those situations out there. And what we need to do as a freshman class and as a leadership team is to sit down and identify those that we're going to go after first. Can you be specific? What in the government, what programs, what agencies are you going to cut to get back to those levels? Well, it's not rocket science. Let's start with all of the TARP funds. Let's get the TARP money back and use it to pay down our debt. Now, let's bring all the unspent stimulus money back. I mean, you're talking about unspent money, but the, there is money that has been spent. Name a painful choice that Republicans are prepared to say we have to make. Well, first of all, we uh, need to make sure that as we look at uh, all that we are spending in Washington, D.C., with not only the, en the entitlement spending, but also uh, the bigger government we cannot afford anymore. We have to empower the free enterprise system. See, this is where... Congressman, these are not specific. Oh, they are. Voters get, get they, tired they, of that. Why not make a single proposal to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? Chris, this is what happens here in Washington. And when you start down that path, you just invite all kinds of problems. Republican Paul Ryan has suggested sharp cuts in Medicare and Social Security. Are you willing to make cuts there? Well, I think we know that just within a day or so, the President of the United States will be taking a trip over to India that is expected to cost the taxpayers $200 million a day. He's taking 2,000 people with him. He'll be renting out over 870 rooms in India. And these are five-star hotel rooms at the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. This is the kind of over-the-top spending. It's a very small example. A lot of politicians just can't name their cut. And by the way, what Congresswoman Bachman said there about the president's trip to Asia costing $200 million a day, well, that was a lie. It didn't cost anywhere near that. Oh, my God. 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 Did you hear? Did you hear? Get this. One-tenth of the entire United States Navy and $200 million a day is what it's going to take to send Barack Obama on a trip to India. I know. Did you hear about this? Taxpayers are spending $200 million a day, and the U.S. Navy is providing 34 warships just to send Barack Obama to India. Did you hear about this? No, really, did you hear it? I totally heard about this. 
just within a day or so, the President of the United States will be taking a trip over to India that is expected to cost the taxpayers $200 million a day. He's taking 2,000 people with him. He'll be renting out over 870 rooms in India, and these are five-star hotel rooms at the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. No one really knows the cost because for security reasons, they don't disclose the cost. So this idea that it's you know $200 million or whatever is simply made up. Well, these are the numbers that have been coming out in the press. Now, that, that is actually true. That last thing she said there about how these numbers have been coming out in the press, that is true. Uh, those numbers have, in fact, been coming out in the press in a very, very specific part of the press. $200 million a day, 3,000 people. He's, he needs the whole Taj Mahal Hotel. It, that's actually reported. I mean, it seems like no, that. No, 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 no. It's two billion dollars. Yeah, we have thirty-four warships. Have you seen this? Five hundred seven rooms at Taj Mahal. Four, uh, forty airplanes. Two hundred million dollars a day. This nation will spend on Obama's trip to India. What's Obama about to do? Go on a trip to India that will cost two hundred million dollars. That's two hundred million per day. I will tell you unequivocally. This has been reported. Go to the internet. Go take a look. I'm not making this up. The show's not making this up. Go to the internet. I'm not making this up. This stuff is on the internet. It's true on the internet. Want to know what else is true on the internet? Uh, canned unicorn meat with sparkles. <laughs> 